Welcome to the Dog Trainers Podcast, a podcast created by dog trainers, for dog trainers, or anyone who's ever fallen in love with man's best friend. Um, awesome, man. Awesome. So so what, it, what, what does it in, entail, the whole certification? How long is that process? So, so the way we do it is we give um, specific certifi- certificates for any course you okay. take. So mm-hmm. somebody could take uh, any of the classes and you get, I completed the obedience intensive at the Michael L school. You get a certificate mm-hmm. for that. Um, and then our, what we have, we have a major program called our immersion program. Mm-hmm. That is a four month long program where traditionally people come and stay on campus. Mm-hmm. That one, uh, you get an overarching certificate. I completed the immersion mm-hmm. program and that, one, and that one is going to be, uh, partially online and then partially in person. You'll have to come. You have for, to be there, yeah. But it doesn't have to be, have to be for four months yeah. still. No, no. There's going to be uh, a month to a, six weeks off campus uh, remote learning, and then you come there for two months, two and a half months. See, that's amazing. So you you sounds like cut fun. somebody's time commitment down by like a month and a half. That's incredible. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. makes a big difference in in that sense and. And once you're there, too, the time is more concentrated, hands-on. Love that. Like, not mixed in together. The classroom, most of the classroom stuff is already and done. you guys have the, dogs or we bring dogs? We do both for people. Okay. So people bring dogs if they want, and then we arrange loaner dogs for people, oh, too. Amazing. Yeah, it. Amazing. Yeah, I mean, I just wish I could figure out a way to run my business and also <laughs> go to school. <laughs> that's the tricky part, yeah, right? That's the tricky part. And that's why when I originally did the school, that's why I had weekly classes. I had the long program, but I broke it all up into one and two week modules mm-hmm. because so many people that were already trainers like, oh, I'd love to come, but I can't take four months yeah. off my business. Yeah. And so I did it in chunks. And so now I'll still have some of the, those modular ones, lots of those. But um, the, the larger program is now kind of standalone. Dude, Lo- okay. Dude, Brent, in all seriousness, you go and I'll cover the dogs and then we switch out. and it- Dude. Dude. <laughs> Damn, that's, 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 that's how close we are. I trust him running my business while I'm gone. For sure. Nice. For sure. So yeah, we, we work together for that, that long. We have, yeah. Awesome. Okay, cool. Well, uh, that's our personal life. Back to the podcast. Uh, <laughs> to get back to the podcast, uh, can I ask you a question, Michael? So he, here was an interesting thing that, that me and Brent really wanted to make sure to get into was Tyler brought up something with, with Tommy and, and we liked your podcast with Tommy as well. Tommy from upstate canine, who has an amazing podcast. Our listeners, please check that out. It's, I believe it's no bad dog podcast or no bad dogs podcast. Um, um say that again. I think that yeah, sounds yeah. right. Um, so one thing that Tyler talked about was the term balanced training is such a blanket these days. It's such a massive kind of, it's almost too big that it encompasses people like you've talked about that you slap some food work in the beginning and you call yourself a balanced dog trainer. Almost so to the yep. point that he's reluctant to really call himself that anymore. So now he calls himself a principal dog trainer. So Brett and I kind of came up with a little brainstorming idea of like, okay, well then what do we call the new thing then? What is this new thing? And, and what we've kind of been trying to figure out is how do you take the art of dog training and, and put that into words and put it into an ideal that's that's digestible, kind of like you do with your with your lesson plans? How do I take this from this rough guesstimate in my head and turn it into something tangible? And what what we're trying to put into words, and then I just wanted to hear your thoughts, were of all the different dog training methodologies, and like we talked about with Sean, it's definitely important to master them before you move on and don't jump around. But with that being said, when you do master it, learn more. We, mm-hmm. uh, I find this this phenomenon. I don't really know how better to explain it than like than like shifting gears in a car where we're not talking extremes like you're revving the bolts off of it, but just in, in the middle where you could be in third, could be in second. Either way, the car would run fine, but it's just a matter of maximizing. And you know, and I find that like for example, a really high level food trainer and a really high level leash trainer, e collar trainer, whatever the case, can teach a lot of the same stuff. And so if these if these possibilities then overlap. How then do you go about choosing which is the absolute best to go for this particular scenario? I think it's it comes down to what Tyler said about understanding the principles, right? Mm-hmm. So you're going to adjust it for the dog that's in front of you. So one of those methodologies is going to have an advantage for a given mm-hmm. dog, right? Mm-hmm. And so you'll speed up the learning process. You'll reduce the amount of stress. You'll solve certain problems with one of those over the other or pieces of both. And when you 
understand the principles, then you make those adjustments. And that's what balanced training is supposed to be. And I'm with Tyler, like I've stopped using the term in general, it's out there and you use it because you're going to try to, it's a, it's a, um, it's a middle uh, ground. An, an antidote to the purely reward based kind of movement and the idea that like anybody that's using uh, any kind of pressure doesn't understand rewards and that whole thing. I and mean, I get where it right. came from, but it, but true it's it's too big a blanket now and people are it are have kind of grabbed that name and they're using it as a marketing tool yep. and they're not necessarily doing good principled dog training and so now you're going like well i don't want to get lumped in with that guy right yeah. and so i think it would you understand that the the principles that underlie both of those approaches right then you get to adjust to the dog that's in front of you based on experience. And part of that will be experimentation. Like you have to be willing, like I've been doing it this way a mm -hmm. lot like in a long time and I'm comfortable. Well, I'm going to try, try this a little earlier mm -hmm. with this dog. Or I'm going to try this a little later. I'm going to try to do more with this dog with rewards than I did with the last dog. Or I'm going to try to introduce the collar earlier to this dog or whatever that is, where you just kind of push the boundaries a little bit to feel how it works with a given dog and then be flexible to adjust as they go along, right. right? That's the thing about real balance, if you want to use that term. It's a theoretical state. Right. You don't get there. It's a moving target. Yeah, that right? there you <laughs> you go. used my Ma word. I, oh, Mar no. Mariano says moving target all the time. I'm so Thank excited. You. Totally. And you don't want to go way over there and then right. way, way back there. Sort of around <laughs> that, that spot. And where that is, is different. And so I, th I, I like the idea of principled, because like, it has a double understand you understand the principles yeah true and you well because because people apply. would throw around like operant dog trainer i'm an operant dog trainer mm. you know they've they've tried that and it, it but everybody's an operant dog trainer you can't true you can't, true you it's can't one walk. well that's when they say like it's scientifically based well everything's worked scientifically <laughs> at some point right so um <laughs> So then a couple questions. Do you think that the term balanced dog training is approaching the end of its like life cycle? Has it served its purpose? Is it time to move on? Yeah, I think so. I think uh, like, I, I, I don't like labels. Yeah. I don't like, right. I, don't, yeah. I don't like, I don't like saying I have systems. I mean, we need to speak a common right, language. Right. Mm -hmm. Every craft, art, science has a jargon, has a set of terminology where we agree on the definitions of certain mm -hmm. things, right? Mm -hmm. And when they're broad like that, they cover that's too big a tent, then they lose their value. Right. La labels right. are kind of just for marketing or people who like labels. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. 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 Exactly. Have term that we all universally agree on its meaning is essential. That's how we communicate with each right. other. Right. That's necessary. But when the terms get too big and everybody has a different idea of what it means and they're misapplying it, now it's not very useful for us. Right. And then my second question would be, would you would you agree with this that a, a good trainer what you know term aside a good principle based dog trainer i think the thing that experience gets you when we talk about each and every one of these methods could work to to achieve this particular objective but deciding which is absolutely best and most advantageous i think that what experience teaches you is is foresight to the hindsight because they always say hindsight's 2020 right so and i'm going to bring up sean one more time is one thing that that he explained to us that was just i thought you know such an amazing you know he, he's such an a, a good bite work trainer and he was explaining to us when you're working bite stuff with a dog and and now we're talking the dog is still young but but they've got their obedience down and they're now getting into bite stuff and a lot of times of course you start with softer and smaller sleeves because to not intimidate the dog before you go on to like straight jute or whatever you know so one thing that that he really fascinated me with was this explanation about the dog was performing perfectly in the moment but the stress the the the, the, the whole lesson was too much for the dog which wasn't apparent until like two three lessons later when they bring out that sleeve and the dog was reluctant to grab and and mm -hmm. he was like and he knew it at the time and he was talking to us about after the fact of like okay so these are the things you need to look out for and the dog looked great at in the moment but there was tiny things that he picked up on that were like, look, you're going to see in a couple lessons, it was too much. That's, that's, that's absolutely experience. And that's what, what winds up happening when you talk about which path I'm going to take, which methodology, right. which way I'm going to lead. What happens with experience and by making lots of mistakes, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. You figure out, you go, 
oh, I've seen this type of dog before. So my initial interaction with the dog is like, oh, I know you. Yeah. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. So, and so I know don't go that way because it doesn't end well for this type of dog. Yeah. And I go and, and you go another way and you start to recognize that earlier. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's, like, that, and, and that's the only experience can give you that to you. Only just True. doing it, feeling it. And when we were talking about that before, that, that that's one thing you cannot shortcut. Right. You have to your hands on a lot of different dogs and you have to have been paying attention. Yep. You have to watch be in the moment. You can't be going through the mm -hmm. motion. You have to pay attention to body language and the little things and, uh, and in protection work, that's essential. Anybody that's a good decoy, the, the person, they, they notice the subtleties mm -hmm. before it's externally right. visible to everyone else and they make adjustments then and there. And so then they don't create a problem. If you push past that, that's where problems come in. When it becomes obvious to everybody that's a problem, you're too late. Right, 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 right. Right. And that's, and that's just life experience, yeah. right? Yeah, that's the wisdom. Enjoy the ride. Enjoy the ride. You'll get there. Like if you, if you keep at it, you, you will get there if you want it. Yeah. Right. And that's the, but patience, patience, patience. Yeah. I, I was fun. actually just going to ask you, I was like, what advice do you have for young dog trainers? <laughs> <laughs> patience, show up, do the work, like, pay attention, concentrate, like be in the moment and be patient. Like you, you, you'll get there, and you, but you have to let it happen as it's going to happen. You can't jump any steps. There's no way. And talent, like in anything else, right? So like there are people that pick it up quickly, but that's still not experience. Right, right. Yeah, I get it. You just have to stay at it. So it. enjoy it. And also as a dog trainer, you have to be process driven. Yes. If you're a super goal oriented person, like I want to be at the end. Yeah. I want the train. Dog. Right. I want to win the competition. You're going to be unhappy as a dog mm -hmm. trainer because you spend 95% of your time in process. Mm -hmm. And most of the transcendent moments happen with you and a dog by yourselves somewhere when you're not on the finished product, but you have some little breakthrough mm -hmm. or we had the perfect training session today. And that has to feel good to you. That has to be the one that matters, not the end result right. portion. And if you're, enjoys that day-to-day -day process and getting in there and those little breakthroughs and stuff, then this is the discipline for you for sure. But if you're like, I want it done yesterday and I want to be the winner and I want to have my dog trained already, you're going to hate dog training because it you spend, you spend all your time in process and very little at the, at the destination. Right. right. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. And it's, there is a, a meditative state that dog training can, you know, you wake up in the morning, you work, you know, five, six, seven dogs before lunchtime and, <laughs> and yeah. you know, I love it. You know, what's I funny is love that's a learned skill. Cause I'm super bad at that meditative state. So like I, I the, the, the day to day, like grind of working the dogs, I love it. And I, and I love to be present and I totally agree, but like sometimes I need extra noise to keep me busy while I'm at it. So like I'll, I'll have my headphones on and working the dogs and I, it's low enough. I can still hear and see and, and be present with the dog. But I always get jealous of people who just have that natural affinity to just buckle down and just work. Yeah. Well, Hey, whatever yeah. works for you, as long as it's working. Michael Ellis, I really want to thank you so much for joining us and just gracing us with your knowledge, your time, your experience, your insights. Um, don't forget, you told me you were going to help me with that one thing. So I'm going to hold <laughs> you to that. Um, so, those of you guys who are interested in checking out what Michael Ellis is up to, go ahead and go to www.michaelellisschool.com. Uh, he has just recently revamped all of his curriculum to now be virtual, online, and able to be done at home. Um, so go ahead and check that out. Um, please go ahead and follow Michael Ellis at Michael underscore Ellis underscore school. Um, and you can also find him at Learberg as well for some of his content. Um, again, this is episode 20. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Now, for those of you who really like this podcast, please go ahead and like us, comment, subscribe. You can find us on all podcast platforms. And also, if you guys are watching this on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe for us and go ahead and leave comments down below. Um, we really hope if you're a young dog trainer or just a dog training enthusiast that this podcast brought a lot of value to you. Um, thank you guys again so much. And we hope to see you guys in episode 21. Hey, everybody, be sure to check out Michael's school. He couldn't be more excited to introduce a major revamp to the way that classes will be made available. Almost all classes will now be available remotely. They'll include a revolutionary combination of live lessons, pre-recorded lectures, and hands-on work with Michael and his staff. Thank you guys again so much, and we'll see you next time. 
Thank you for listening to the Dog Trainers Podcast, a podcast created by dog trainers, for dog trainers, or anyone who's ever fallen in love with man's best friend.